Hello everyone, I'm Anaxite, and welcome to my Let's Play of Hand of Fate. Ah, one more for the game. Come, Sid. You have passed the Thirteen Gates. And you come to my table to play the game of life and death. Your stake is wagered. I refuse none who come here, yet I say, turn back. So, Hand of Fate is one of my favorite games, in that it's kind of unique. I haven't seen any other game that does anything quite like it. Um, it's a combination of action RPGs, in which you go around and try to kill monsters and enemies. Uh, but it's also a kind of a board game, randomized board game with deck building mechanics that let you kind of create your own adventure. Although the board is going to be randomized whenever you go through a dungeon. There are different mechanics and I'll explain them as we go along. Uh, the game is kind of tutorialized for the first couple dungeons. And after that, uh, it will take the kid gloves off, and we will be free to mess around and have fun with the progressing difficulty. Or die. Really often. Because that's going to happen, and it's not going to be fun. Let's jump right in. The game begins. One lives, and one dies. Let us see what you are made of. The dealer talks a lot. For the first few dungeons, I'm going to let you listen to all his wonderful lines, and then he'll start repeating himself. Here is the first member of my court, the Jack of Dust. Twelve in all must fall before you may challenge me. So, the Jack of Dust is our first main boss of the first dungeon. And every single dungeon has a boss at the end. He's who you're trying to get to, survive to, and then just take down. Let the cards fall where they may. We begin. Right away, we're thrown into the first dungeon. This little piece here is you. Uh, you start off on a uh, revealed card. Your stats are on the left. You've got your health, your food, and food is consumed every time you advance a card on the board. Move your pawn from one to another, going forward or backwards, and also consumed in certain events. Gold is a currency which is used in shops or also in certain events. You also have your inventory. You can always review your cards here. This will show you a bunch of things. Here is all you have gained. Some of which we don't have right now, as we've just barely started. But there'll be more here later. You can also see all our equipment. Which right now, light armor and a pretty crappy axe. That'll change now, let's move forward. I was never a fan of illusion or pretense. Here, I'll make an exception. Mr. Lalal is a basic first card. A really easy way of getting some equipment at the start. You can give him something random, but we have plenty of food, and it's a tutorial, so let's exchange something. As it says, shields can reflect projectiles, not all of them, and counter enemies. This is one of the main mechanics of every single combat. And like you noticed, Whenever you gain any equipment, you go through your deck. And uh, sometimes you get a better draw than others. 
You can now reflect your opponent's ranged attacks using your shield. Make good use of this skill if you wish to survive. Let's go this way. Fair Merith. I'm not surprised to find that this encounter remains vivid in your memories. The Maiden is also a really basic get a freebie card. We have everything we could possibly want, so... Well, hell, let's just go for gold. I'm sure you are grateful for that. Bound once more, seeking the heart of it all. Stairs, or other cards like it, move you to the next level of a dungeon. But we still have a card to explore, and we don't have to go ahead. So let's just take a little bit and uh, go down one. That first moment, that glinting weapon, the call to action, to adventure. Truly, there is nothing like it. Hmm. Well, I'm feeling lucky. Choose from these options. And this is the main chance mechanic in the game. Whenever there's a chance of success or failure, you will get four cards with success, great success, failure, or huge failure on them. Eh, this is probably fine. Marginally better, so let's take that. A moment to savor. That will make you much more effective. There is a little trick with these chance events, and we'll show it later. Head downwards, if you dare. You are on the final floor of our simple map. Your opponent waits here for you. Find him. If you defeat me, well, it is early to be talking about victories and losses. Let us see what you're made of. What did you think would happen with a card called Ambush, eh? Whenever you get to monster encounters, your monsters are drawn at random. Two of dust meets two enemies of the dust suit which are bandits. You can now counter your opponent's attacks. Hit the counter button when you see the flashing indicator. Oh, well, welcome to combat. Move around. There's no real time limit here. You can attack. Simple. The combo meter goes up and you do harder hits. You can dodge, left, right, forward, back, and you can get hit like an idiot, like I just got. If green lines appear, hit Q to counter. If they fall on the ground, you can do a couple finisher moves to kill instantly. first fights are really simple, but it gets hectic later on. Mm. Now nah, let's get him. So, what you may have seen, the game doesn't tell you at first. The end position of the cards is random, but they actually do physically move. So... This card was on top in the middle, and it came all the way on the left. This was a success card, so we know this is safe. But later, you'll shuffle more than once. Then it's a little bit dicier. We'll see that when we get to it. The 
most fundamental symbol of might for an age. We already got an axe, so we're pretty good. Really? Is that what you're going to do? A little extra help, but it is only a momentary respite. So we've been consuming food as we go on. If our health was below full, which so far I've been lucky, every time you advance a square and uh, consume some food, you regain a bit of health. And then you got shops. If you were wondering why you've been collecting all that gold, you now have your answer. We're starting to get into the meat of the game now. The back and forth between resources and rewards. There are different kind of shops. Tinker is uh, one of the basic ones. All shops will let you buy food, if you've got the money. You can sell excess items that you've collected. We could sell the sword, because we're not going to use it. You can also buy items. Whether it's artifacts that have special powers, weapons, shields, armor, helmets, other things like that. In this case, we really don't need any of these, so we'll just leave. I'm sure it's not called Dead Man's Gorge without reason. You can destroy all the crates if you want. It does absolutely nothing. So, this is a the theme of the game. You keep trying to go do a finisher, and you end up having to counter. You never get to do your finisher, and you go back and forth. Um, combat in this game is not the best, but it, it'll, it's serviceable. A peasant's weapon, but effective nonetheless. You have reached my first champion. A good man, driven to madness by a war that took all from him. Wife and child, kith and kin. From such dark and brittle iron I forge my tools. Now we see your metal. This token will unlock more cards if you can defeat this encounter. All cards that have a little symbol down here at the bottom can unlock new cards for later on. And new cards can be new encounters, or new equipment, or other things. The Jack of Dust here will let us progress. Some enemy attacks cannot be blocked or countered. Get out of the way or stop them with your own counter attack. So, the dealer helpfully explains what the Jack of Dust can do. More enemies will do it later, but every time the Jack of Dust attacks with a red line, or three red lines above his head, you want to dodge. You're going to get hit. There is no way to block this. And eventually, you get into large fights where a whole lot of enemies are going to do all these at once. You may also notice that, for the most part, the enemies are actually being super nice to you. 
and we'll only attack one at a time. Except the Jack. This won't always hold true, but it's one way you can kind of take advantage of the combat system. into the worms with him. Perhaps there is peace for him in the grave, poor soul. One champion has been sent to the cabinet. Yet we are only at the start of our road. You will face 11 more opponents who will test your strength, your memories, and your resolve. Few fall at the first hurdle. None reach the last. We have wagered, and you have won. You may claim your rewards, yet I will also claim mine. As you improve, so do I. Balance must be retained. it for the first dungeon. I'll see you next time for the Jack of Skulls in Let's Play Hand of Fate. Till then, see you later.